Despite some of the negative outside noise you may be hearing from the national media as far as the Vikings potentially having a roadblock in packaging up pick 11 and 23 to trade up and take a quarterback, the Vikings are in a great spot. They have the advantage right now if they want to trade up for a top three pick because the Vikings, as of right now, they are the only team outside of Chicago that's looking to address the quarterback position that also has two first round picks in this year's draft. I do think that if you want to make this happen, you need to do it now sooner rather than later because the more that time passes by without making that trade up, the more time you're giving to other teams to put together similar trades, step one to get to step two, similar to what the Vikings did yesterday with the Houston Texans getting pick 23. But if Quasi is able to pull this off, I, bro, I will detail your car once a week at TCO Performance Center for life, for free. <laughs> They're in the driver's seat. And if we talked about this during the live stream and I, we came to a consensus, I believe, at the end and even reflecting on it more so after the live stream, chances are you're going to have to also give up 2025's first round pick and I'm okay with that quarterback of the future now is not the time to be like oh that may be a little bit too rich for our blood if that's your guy whether it's Jaden Daniels or Drake May most likely Drake May if that's your guy you feel confident in not only Quasi Adafo Mensa and your scouting department but also Kevin O'Connell you feel that you can coach this guy up go and get him a 2025 first round pick be damned but if they fail to jump up, if they fail to package those two picks together and trade up for a top three pick, I still believe the Vikings are in a great spot because maybe the hype doesn't match the overall scouting of J.J. McCarthy. I think he's a second round pick. He could be good, but him going in the first round or even worse, him have or him, a team having to trade up to jump the New York Giants past pick six to get him is absurd I think he's a second round pick but if he falls down to 11 and you feel like you got to take him before someone else does okay fine and then take a defensive player at pick 23 you're still in a good spot but I wouldn't take Penix at 23 if JJ McCarthy doesn't fall to you I wouldn't take Penix at pick 23 because that defeats the purpose of the trade with Houston yesterday in the first place. I think you could have gotten Penix at 42. Essentially, taking Penix at 23, you're giving up 42 and a future second round pick for somebody that would have been available for you had you have not made that trade yesterday. I say in that case, if McCarthy doesn't fall to you at pick 11, take two defensive studs. And we did multiple mock drafts during yesterday's live stream actually going over that scenario. Either take two defensive tackles, Byron Murphy II and Johnny Newton, or Edge, Jarrett Verse, for example, and Johnny Newton at 23. And then take another stab, take Jordan Travis in the later rounds, day three, See what he looks like after a year of rehab. And worst case, take another stab at a quarterback next year. You'll still have your first round pick. But the Vikings, they they are going, I think no matter what happens, you have to go out of your way to screw up this draft, which in 2022, respectfully, he did. But I'm going to choose to believe that Quasi Adafo Mensa has learned from his previous mistakes. The Vikings are in prime position to, if nothing else, boost up this team defensively to where if you have to go for a quarterback again in 2025 to take another shot at that position, guess what? That quarterback is coming into a much better situation then than what he would now. Obviously, you want to get Jaden Daniels or Drake May. I saw that switching gears here. The Vikings are signing Dan Feeney, interior offensive lineman, and I understand the excitement with Vikings Nation right now. He has the mullet and it's cool looking. I get it. This is a depth signing when we're talking about football. Not only is this a depth signing, 
This is a guy who you hope never sees the light of play. This is a bad football player. And I'm going to tell you exactly how and why I know this. Dan Feeney was selected 70 with the 71st overall pick in the 2017 draft. One pick after Pat Elfline. And I remember vividly doing a video where I was criticizing the Pat Elfline pick and saying, I would have went Dan Feeney, but that's just me. To Elfline's credit, his rookie year, he was pretty solid. And then after that, it went straight to hell. While it was going bad, admittedly, I was looking for ammunition to pile on top of Rick Spielman and be like, what? You could have had Dan Feeney. Why did you not select him? And in real time, while I was researching Dan Feeney and his performance, it was equally as bad as Pat Elfline. Dan Feeney, in three years as a full-time starter, for the LA Chargers, allowed 17 sacks. Now, he was a guard. They mixed him in between guard and center, but his last season, it with the Chargers, he was the starting center. That was in 2020. He allowed, according to Warren Sharp, the most hurries, 24, and the most pressures, 33 of any center. This is a journeyman offensive lineman now with the Vikings. This is his, if he plays for the Vikings, this will be his fourth team. And you don't, you're not a journeyman offensive lineman if you're good. He's got the mullet. It looks cool. It's fun to talk about. But in terms of football, you hope he never plays. 